What is up guys, KingsK19 here. I've brought you some Call of Duty and some Battlefield 3 gameplay in the past, so today I'll be playing some Slayer on Halo Reach. I do reasonably well for the game, the enemy team ends up just whoring the uh, armor lock and the active camo. So, with that in mind, I do respect to be well. Uh, first things first, as always, thank you guys for liking my previous videos, giving me feedback, subscribing to my channel, it all helps me out. Um, a couple pieces of information before I get rolling on my topic today. Um, first things first, I, for those of you who know, I do tend to talk a lot about uh, political issues, and I understand that there are a lot of people out there who are not as interested in such issues as I am. And so just, uh, just to make sure you guys are keeping interested in the videos, uh, for this video, in the comments after you're done viewing, if you'd like to uh, drop me a message in the comments telling me, <clears throat> excuse me, exactly, telling me um, what maybe you'd like to hear talked about, that would be great. It's not that I'm running out of topics, it's just that I want to uh, express my views on something you guys maybe would like to hear talked about. Also, I am planning on getting some group comms started in the future, hopefully soon at some point. I've had a lot of people express interest in that. And so I'm still looking at some technical difficulties as far as how I'm going to pull that off. But I should be able to get those worked out pretty soon. I'm spending a lot of time on it. Um, today's topic is a little different from the ones I've talked about in the past because it has nothing to do with me personally or anything of my personal political views. Uh, it has something more to do about uh, the whole of humanity and one of, in my opinion, one of the most dangerous situations we faced ourselves with recently. Recently, the Japanese diplomat Akio Matsumura came uh, to talk to the Japanese government and he sent some messages to the uh, Japanese representatives in the United Nations uh, talking about the Fukushima nuclear plant and for those of you who will remember the um, the March 2011 tsunami uh, heavily damaged this nuclear facility in Japan and one of the most uh, damaged parts of Fukushima was reactor 4. Reactor 4 is storing a good amount of spent fuel rods. Within the reactor there are 1,535 fuel rods about 100 feet from the ground. Um, below it there are 6,375 fuel rods and there are a good deal more scattered in buildings around it. Uh, reactor 4 is in danger of collapsing. Um, the amount of radioacti radioactive material uh, held by the fuel rods which are not uh, protected by any shielding at the moment. Uh, if Reactor 4 collapses, it would release uh, 134 million curies of cesium-137. Cesium-137, for those of you who don't know, is an element. It is a byproduct of creating electricity from nuclear means. It is extremely radioactive. Um, the uh, Chernobyl incident in the Ukraine in 1985, I want to say it was, I'm not sure the exact year. Um, I could be completely wrong, but anyway. Uh, the uh, Chernobyl incident, which to date is the most, uh, the largest nuclear disaster the world has seen, um, released about 85 times less cesium-37 than what is currently being stored in the uh, Fukushima plant and the uh, area affected by Chernobyl is still extremely radioactive to this day. Um, if Reactor 4 collapses, the, uh, the spent fuel rods would be open to the air. That would cause a release of nuclear material that would destabilize Earth's ecosystem and essentially extinguish life as we know it on the planet. Uh, Mr. Matsumura who's taking this very calmly in my opinion he has sent a message to the Japanese representatives in the United Nations saying that the United Nations needs to take action to prevent this from happening and to date the United Nations has not made any comments on whether or not they are going to be uh, dealing with this now 
I understand there is a lot of work that has to be done in order to reach diplomatic channels in the United Nations. And even for a diplomat who I assume is reasonably high up there, it can take some time. But how irresponsible is it of the world governments to not be paying more attention to this? The United Nations has been notified. They, there should be at least some comment by now, especially for the gravity of this situation. Um, to me, I feel, I feel as though we're defaulting the situation to the Japanese, and I feel that's extremely disrespectful given how cooperative Japan has been with uh, world leaders to try and resolve the issues at Fukushima, and also given how little assistance we've actually given them in regards to the earthquake. We've made monetary donations, we've uh, sent volunteers, but most of the rebuilding from the tsunami is being done and has been done by the Japanese themselves. And I feel as though, in addition to essentially ignoring the warning that this guy is giving us and ignoring the uh, help that they are required to deal with such a catastrophic event, there hasn't been much media coverage about this either. And honestly, from what I can tell, I feel that's because no country really wants to have that responsibility on their shoulders. Um, and this, this, it's a scary thought to think not only that we're facing such a critical point in the uh, process of the Japanese recovery from the tsunami, but that we can't get past our political differences or our political agendas to even come together and pay attention to such an event like this. Um, if, like I said before, if this, if Reactor 4 melts down, if Reactor 4 collapses, the, radio, the radioactivity that would spread from it has the potential to negatively impact our lives for centuries. Right now there's some radioactivity in the ocean surrounding Japan from the, uh, from the tsunami, from the fallout that occurred earlier. And just, just to think that, that, that the uh, nuclear situation we're facing from Fukushima right now is nowhere near what Chernobyl was. And it has the potential to be 85 times worse than that. And we're barely paying any attention to it at all. It's disturbing to me to think that we can just let something like this go so idly. Um, another problem that I'm having is that it's, this isn't even the biggest worry for the plant. Uh, reactors 1, 2, and 3 sustain heavy damage during the tsunami, and they are in danger of melting down. The Japanese government has admitted to the public that they cannot rule out the possibility of a meltdown in reactors 1, 2, or 3, or more than that. And so the fact that this is not getting more attention is, a is distressing to me. Um, so that's the end of this video, guys. I'll be posting the link to the article. Uh, do your own research. That's all the time I have. Kreenus K19. Peace out.